Hey guys, welcome to the Everything Show. My name is Eric. My name is April. I'm Ian. And this is the Everything Show. We are so excited. This is our first episode. Woo! <laughs> um, we have some exciting yes. things in store for you guys, and we just hope you guys stay tuned. And um, yeah, like let's just get into it. Yeah, let's just get into it. Um, let's talk about the pandemic because I know it affected a lot of people. There was a lot of loss. There was good mm-hmm. and bad things that happened during the pandemic. Um, but I just want to start off with a question to you guys. Like, mm. what were you guys like before the pandemic, before quarantine? Uh, it's funny because like time goes by fast and you really think like oh I'm gonna be so free through this like, the entire life like no that's bullshit <laughs> right? Right. shit changes you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying and it, it's funny it's almost laughable to look back and like <laughs> wow you thought you were stressed about that shit dude nigga shit is stressed about that. <laughs> right, right. Yes, oh literally. And, and just to put context right it's like um, at the time so here's the thing April and I are uh, we're in our third years uh, Eric is in his second year so second we were always actually year. here yeah. Uh, before we went into quarantine, right? Because mm-hmm. it happened in March 2020, right? Yeah. Somewhere yeah. around there. Oh, I remember. Actually, it was... um. I remember going right into spring break. Mm-hmm. I remember particularly. And, and we were all like... Back. When is spring break for here? It's not early, bro. Like yeah. in March. March, April? Yeah. Because when I was, a, I was a senior in high school, and we shut down March 12th. Or like 14th or 12th. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, because... Yeah, it was literally that week of... I remember because... Yeah. um. We had a fucking snow back, day. Didn't come back. <laughs> yeah, like two weeks off. You know, we're gonna come back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need these two breaks off, but right, fucking nice, right. you know. But I remember because it snowed on that Saturday. It yeah, did. It did. I remember it did. that was the last day I went out and hung out my friends before. Literally, I was in the house yeah. for. Bro, my friends months. invited me, but I was like, "Shit, my uncle's in town from Mexico, like a camp." I'm yeah. like, "Don't worry about like." I was like, "This COVID shit, it ain't shit." But I was like, "We'll mm-hmm. get together, even if we're online, we can like do homework together every mm-hmm. like, you know, just get our shit done together." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, definitely." You know, but um, that was not the case. <laughs> <laughs> That was not the fucking case at all. Mm-hmm. And damn, it was a whole whirlwind, bro. I, I remember, like, and ironically, a couple months before, uh, I was I was visiting my friends in Seattle where the first cases was. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I was like, mm, it ain't shit. It's in quarantine. It ain't gonna get out. Like, like you know yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I kicked with the homies. Uh, just had a super fun, like, you know, guys weekend type shit. Mm. And Get with the boys. Yeah, honestly. And uh, I came back. You know, just doing school, and I was actually going through counseling, so I was like trying to figure that shit out too. Um, and I started my freshman year, so like, but at that point, you know, I've been at it, and you know, but it's like the struggles of like getting yourself back up, right? Performing self self acts of love of like, you know, I started doing like gratitude journals every morning. I was praying, I was meditating, I was really going through. That shows how desperate you are, and it's kind of <laughs> ironic, especially because like, you know, I'm made of faith, I believe in God, so it's like. Everything does feel shitty when you're like, damn, I only go to you, Lord, when um I'm in pain. Mm-hmm. And when I'm good, I'm like, I don't need you. Like, keep right. staying in your corner, mm-hmm. you know? And then it's just hypocritical and it sucks because, like, at the end of the day, it's kind of like, I, obviously, as you guys know, I'm a perfectionist mm-hmm. and I have such unrealistic standards because I want everything to change like that. Right. I'm like, I want to know, you know, but that's just not how it works. Yeah. And so it's, it's learning to, like, forgive yourself, try to get up and forward and i was like making strides you know but you know i'm thinking spring break oh i get an extra week go out the pad like like covid ain't shit mm-hmm. and then i remember there was like rumors going on like some professors like wifey's like family something like mm-hmm. got sick or some shit through covid and oh, i was like oh that ain't shit like we'll be fine we'll be cool you know yeah. what i'm saying mm-hmm. and it wasn't it's um, funny that you say that because when when the first cases of uh, COVID-19 were here in, in Washington or in the United States, it was so bad, but I really wanted school to, like, close down. and I mm. It was that down bad. Yeah, I was that down bad of, like, I... But that shows how where you were at. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, RIP to the people that, that passed away from COVID. Mm-hmm. Really, like, threw me off. Because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm good. And I was excited, too, because I was like, you know what? Like, and I was getting work from constant, like, we'll go to Zoom. I'm like, oh, it's just Zoom. Like, you know, like, I have my privacy. Uh, I'm very fortunate. You know, my parents are very accepting, loving, and, and supportive, you know. And they right. help me get on to this journey. And I think that's just, just such a privilege I have, especially as a POC and with immigrant parents. So I got lucky, you know. But, you know, it was still, nevertheless, like, no matter who you are, where in the world, like, COVID was pretty fucking tough. 
mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But that's how I was like beforehand. And in school, I was actually pretty, I was okay, you know? And I was like surviving. I was passing, you know what I'm saying? And I was turning in my homework, doing mm-hmm. what you gotta do. That's, that's kind of like where I was at. Um, mm-hmm. What if I do this? April? No, you wanna go first? No, I'll let you go first. Tell your story. <laughs> I think that for me, like, I was such in a bad place that I didn't want, like, school to continue. Like, like I was thinking of dropping out. Like, I, I was never going to do it, but I was thinking of, like, like I'm telling, you like, yeah, I thought about it, which, um, like, it made me, like, feel like a failure, like, oh, like, you really, like, were thinking about dropping out. Like, why would you do that, you know? Right. But um, I think I was very like confused of like who I was and stuff during like before the pandemic I think I was more like um it felt like I was trying to find myself but I didn't in a way have the time to Mm. didn't have like like I almost wanted to be forced to like find myself you know yeah because I was in school I was in um like I was I was stressing over school I had stuff going on at home and I couldn't have that time to like like um work on myself and I, I really get you, like, when you said you wanted to, like, find yourself, but you didn't have the time. Mm-hmm. For me, it was, like, I knew that I needed to find out who I was and what I wanted to do and, like, what steps I needed to take to get to that better place. Yeah. But I didn't know, like, I didn't, like, know what to do for that. And, you know, going to school every day, you know, having friends there, you know, doing stuff outside of school because, you know, there was no mass or nothing. So you have to do whatever you wanted. Yeah. You know, you didn't really, like, have time to really sit down and work on yourself. Like, some people did, but I didn't have that time. Yeah, and you know i think it kind of happened a little bit before i even knew what covid was which was like in like december i want to say mm-hmm. um you know i ended relationships i ended a lot of friendships like i was like I, something in my life needs to change you know mm-hmm. and luckily like i sound so bad but luckily you know quarantine hit and i was like this is the perfect time for me to work on myself you know it's yeah. like this is so bad to say it's like fucked up to say you know to like all those people who died you know families that went through loss and tragedy but like i needed that time you know, I need that time to really sit down, look in the mirror. Like, I literally shaved my hair off. I was like, you know, I got to start something new, what get new saying? outfits, you know. I was like, I need, like, something new in my life. And, like, I didn't find, like, that 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 happiness with changing myself, like, my appearance. I only found that happiness, like, changing within, you know. Yeah. But that's really interesting, though. Because you're coming from a perspective of, like, you're just new year, you're going to graduate. Like, it's yeah. exciting, you know. Mm-hmm. But, like, a lot of that shit was taken away from you yeah mm-hmm. like a lot of i feel like a passing of age type shit at least in the u.s yeah. mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know how it is in like in other places but you know i feel like senior is like it's big and yeah. like graduation is big and knowing that way you're gonna make it or not mm-hmm. right and then for us it was a little bit different where it's like we're in college but mm-hmm. um i feel like we forget like freshman year in general for everybody mm-hmm. it fucking sucks it it's does. really it fucking hard it's that like saying R.I.P. peace to like almost like our childhood. Like you know how people were like, oh my high school years when us is like, no oh, guys, what are you talking about? You right. know? But in the sense, it was like it was a lot of changes. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, shit. Even like the summer going into uh the fall 2019, like our freshman year, that was when I started like messing around, experimenting, and like just doing just young dumb broke shit. You mm-hmm. know, <laughs> just really ratchet shit. Yeah. Messing with my friends, smoking, like drinking, like doing all this stupid it was about that life. I was about that life. And I was like, I'm young. I did what I had to. I was good tissues. Like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I deserve mm-hmm. myself some shit, you know? And it ended up being a whole lot of drama and mess because we got caught and like all this crap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was cool. I think looking back, I'm like, that really was just a, a turning point where it's like, I'm saying goodbye to well, my childhood in a sense. Yeah. And it's like, okay, now we're going to adulthood. And that was the one thing that I was not prepared for. Because, I don't know if I told you, but from my high school, um, they invited alumni to come back, like, like just to see, like, how was your semester? Like, first right. semester in college, like, how's it going, you know? And we got invited. I was like, fuck it, why not? You know, and I remember, because me and my friend, Maritza, we were like, we're going to talk shit. We're going to be like, you know, prepare for shit. Or we're going to just give it a buck 50. Because, like, right. they did this every year with all the seniors. And everyone's like sugarcoating, kissing ass, and like, oh my god, it's great, but there's some struggles, but like, I love it. And I'm like, no, no one's talking about like how ugly it can get. Yeah. You know, because like I told you, like, I started counseling, like, I'd be crying on my car sometimes, like, on my way to school, from school, between clubs, mm-hmm. like, I love it's like, different though, crying in your car, you know? That's a different kind of sad. I've never cried in my car, like, like, 
like you know when you're having bad day you just go there you just cry no like, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. You're in a good state of mind then. Because <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think just one, like, like sometimes like I don't know where I'm driving and I'm just like emotional and then I cry but like never like you know you're having a rough day you go in your car and then you cry. Oh yeah that is I don't go in my car oh, okay. like specifically like no. it's always like I'm driving and I finally like get to a place where I need to go and I, it just comes out. It's just comes okay, out. Okay, but okay. I think like, maybe for us guys is different because it's like I feel like a lot of guys it's like with that, like, even, like, toxic masculinity type shit where mm-hmm. it's, like, you want to bottle your feelings and shit. Because for me, a lot of, like, when I, growing up, like, especially in high school, I was like, oh, I don't cry. Like, it takes, it, it takes a lot for me to cry. Like, you can insult me all you want, but I'm not going to cry about it. Like, yeah. I just, I'm not like that. And I thought, I was playing, I was like, I'm laid back, I'm mm-hmm. chill. <laughs> when really, I was just, like, not unpacking yeah. what was bothering me. You know, I don't think this is really suppressed. Repress it. Even those terms in general, I don't really believe in that shit. Mm-hmm. To me, it's like, no, it's there. You just haven't unpacked it yet, you know? And for college, you know, that exasperated that. Because then I was like, oh, I'm on my own. Mm-hmm. I'm not with my clique no more. Mm-hmm. Uh, the few friends I had, um, I don't have a lot of classes with them. And what I do, they made their own friend groups. And right. I was trying to, you know, meet with more POCs, especially from, coming from a Catholic, like, private school, like, uh, I'm not really good to know my people, right. you know? And I was like, oh my God, my people. And everyone's like, this is the widest school. I'm like, you don't know where I've been, you know? But it, it was, it, it felt kind of shitty too, because it still felt lonely. Where it was like, mm-hmm. I was jumping from one clique to another, to another, to another. Yeah. There was really not that That's place. That stability. That stability. And at the same time, it's like with the adulthood, it's like learning that there's not, you have to create your own structure. In high school, they pamper you a lot and they take care of you. On top of the yeah. personal shit that you're already going through as a team, but um, in college, it's like you're you're on your own almost. Yeah. It's like, I always like to say, like a foot in the real world, foot, foot and not, you know? Because mm-hmm. you're an adult, but you're still, we still have resources. There's still people got our backs and shit. It's not like in the real world, it's like, figure it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. But you want to touch on the adulthood thing? Yeah, because I, like, okay, so right before uh, COVID happened or started getting, like, really serious here in the United States, specifically here in Washington, Mm -hmm. I was in a relationship. And we were talking about, like, you know, growing up and, like, uh, how college makes you realize that, you know, you don't really have that, I guess, in a way, like, someone holding your hand through classes Mm -hmm. and work and, like, stuff like that. Um, I was in a relationship, and it almost felt like I was stuck. Like, you know, Um, like, right before COVID, mm -hmm. um... Like, I just felt stuck. I, like, was, I wasn't doing good in classes. Like, I felt like I was just stagnant in my life. And I, and that relationship was just not growing. Mm -hmm. And, like, it was, we were together for three years. So, that means that my junior year of high school, my senior year of high school, and my freshman year of college. So, like, for three years, I was just stagnant. I felt like I wasn't growing. And I was just, like, I guess in a way in a dark place. Because I felt like I, I wanted to grow. And I couldn't grow. Mm -hmm. But... Like, it was a, like a, like it pushed me to grow and like to, I broke up with him like right before, um, like COVID ended. Mm -hmm. So like, I didn't spend any time with him at all. And like, I was just forced to grow. I was like by myself all the time. Like, I didn't know how much I appreciated like being with myself. But you said before COVID ended though. I'm a little confused on that. So I think we're still in COVID. Yeah, Google COVID. Sorry, sorry. Before, uh, <laughs> like before, before, before high school, before COVID started. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, before okay. COVID started. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I just, right, right, right. A whole <laughs> pandemic. A whole pandemic. <laughs> no, before COVID started, I had broken up with him, so we didn't even like um, mm. experience COVID together. Yeah. Oh, I see. So wow. I was like, yeah, wow, dude. That I'm just like. So it goes wow. from like being with someone for like three years straight, like every single day. Like I was seeing this man every single day Mm -hmm. like he would like come to my house from like like a.m to like p.m like almost the next day Mm -hmm. damn i was just always together even like during college and he would he would get upset that i was with my friends a lot but like it was college like my first year like i felt like finally free a little bit Mm. because i did have to see him in school and he wouldn't come over and stuff because i actually had stuff to do now i feel like it's kind of good though that quarantine happened as far as relationships because you get that like being with someone every single day and all day but then this drastic change of like not being with each other yeah. and that really shows you how like codependent you are with people 
because you realize like, oh my God, like, I need this person. I need them. I need them. But it's like, you can't see them because I mean, at least I hope you're not seeing them, you know, to stay yeah. safe in the beginning. I know some of you motherfuckers saw your friends. I know. Post <laughs> snapped, so I'm like, oh, you're going to parties and shit like nothing's happening. Literally, I was forced <laughs> in the house. I remember I tried to go out like the second week of quarantine. I was like, oh, there's a whole pandemic. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh. I, no, in the beginning, I, I went out like once or twice, but just with friends. Yeah. And my parents were like, where the fuck you at? Yeah. And it's like, I'm fucking scared. Man. I think a lot of teenagers didn't know. Shit, shit. They didn't yeah. also didn't care honestly like yeah. you know yeah. some of that didn't care they're like oh you know it's fake or like mm-hmm. um like it just doesn't phase me like i'm young fine. yeah, yeah. Like, we're gonna be back in two weeks why do i need to sit in my house for two weeks right. like you know we're gonna be right back into it but yeah i think it's just good that some people got that alone time and realized that they need to work on themselves mm-hmm. and it's like damn like i can really do so much without you like you know why do i need you in my life you know what right. sucks to say but I feel like that's the truth. A lot of people had to face our reality. A lot of relationships were put to the test yes. during quarantine. Yeah, it was. And, like, I broke up literally right, like, right, right, right before uh, COVID uh, started, like, getting big before here. Before that spring break. Yeah, right mm-hmm. before. So, like, those extra days, those times in between us being together and, like, quarantine. So, like, I had just broken up with him. Like, bro, those were joyful days days like mm-hmm. i was going to work like i was having the time of my life yeah. and then i was forced to like go into quarantine and like mm-hmm. it was just a whole nother experience being alone and like you know with myself yeah, yeah. growing thinking reflecting and it's just a lot amazing. of self-reflection happened i think all of us it seems like all of us really like had like something that we we're about to work on and then covid kind of took that away from us but it gave us yeah. this like time it's like i'm giving you this big chunk of time Use it how you want, and it's not like we all kind of use it to reflect, yeah. grow, and become the person we are now. Yeah. But that was dope. I think that was yeah. one of the like pros, you mm-hmm. know, because then in the beginning of the quarantine, I was like, oh hell yeah, like summer came early. We're making yeah. cracking jokes and be like, all right, like have a great summer, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's just like, at first it was fun, yeah. but then you realize like, oh, I kind of miss the structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I miss being with people. And then, yeah, it's, it's like you said, the codependency and realizing, like, fuck, this is really hard. Mm-hmm. And then being like, oh, I'm still with my family. And I'm, um, I'm like, I'm blessed, too, because I, I actually got my mom and dad around. Mm-hmm. I'm still at home with my older sister, who's, who's now 23. My sister, she's 10 right now, so, like, just minus, like, one year. But, like, we're all together, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's like, that was already stressful in and of itself. And I'm like, damn, I can only imagine for those or an apartment. Because I was in a house, right? I was in an apartment. But you were in an apartment. Yeah. So I was like, damn. Because I was really feeling Because I was thinking back. Like, looking back to when we lived in, like, uh, one of those, like, fourplexes, you know? It's, like, it's yeah. like an apartment, but it's, like, double. But yeah. it's, like, narrow as shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I lived in one of those for, like, long of time. And I'm thinking, like, I got sick of that shit. And those are all pre-quarantine, pre-Rona. You mm-hmm. feel me? Uh, damn, Rona was a slut, though. That's some real shit. She don't discriminate. <laughs> she got any and everybody. Oh, she wanted everybody. Mm-hmm. She wanted everybody. Especially the old. She kind of fetish. Yeah. Right. She had an old people fetish. <laughs> she did. Uh, yeah, it was hard. I, I didn't understand, like, those, like, in, in apartments, like, those four third townhomes. Like, we we're all, like, kid together. Or, like, single parents, mm-hmm. you know, or, or folks are taking care of the older folks, you know, and, mm-hmm. and the parents aren't around. You know, there's, like, so many cap- or possibilities. And I'm like, damn, like, this is tough as it is. Like, I could only imagine, you mm-hmm. know? But it was hard. And I used to think, or initially, I thought different about it in the terms of, like, because y'all were saying, like, it's a great time to, like, you know, work on ourselves. But initially, uh, I kept hearing that shit when we, where, like, I see it around social media was, like, you know, a lot of things may be bad, but take the opportunity to work on yourselves. And mm-hmm. I was like, hell yeah. I was with that shit. But then when shit got real, especially with the counseling shit that I really was going through and I had to take a pause on that, um, it was really fucking hard. And that's where I was like, is it the best, like, is it the best time to really be working on ourselves? I'm like, dude, like, sure, we have the capability to be on our own and really self-reflect, but practicing what you preach and how you want to be better, it's like it's that much harder to create healthy habits all at home. Because this is where people get creative, right? Where it's like, you're at home, but it's like, mm-hmm. Home sanctuary. Home is rest. Home is getting away from people sometimes because you get drained. Mm-hmm. Um, or some people feel like, you know, exhausted because they want to be with people and that's how they recharge and unfortunately they didn't have that. Like, maybe the introverts were fucking like praising Jesus and shit, but, yeah. you know. I've seen a bunch of memes on Facebook 
on Facebook saying that they were really happy. <laughs> what? The uh, introverts saying yes. they were really happy. They were like, this is what I needed. I can just recharge, recharge. <laughs> but where's that energy right now? You did all that recharging in quarantine. <laughs> Don't be an introvert. Literally, I'm like, you had all that time to figure no, out what you're going to do. I think that's just off of the bit, you know, because yeah. my sister's very introverted, like, homebody, but even she was like, I can't deal with that, or I can't deal with, like, or even my sister, like, I can't deal with y'all, I say yeah. too much, you know, because there was, like, techniques and shit online of, like, you know, like, you need that. Sometimes, like, on our commute to work, that's when we immensely prepare ourselves for the day. You gotta mm-hmm. do that at home, and that, maybe that means changing to more formal clothes, even if you're still at home. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, bro, us fresh to adulthood like how are we gonna learn all these healthy coping skills and growth mindsets and all this bullshit when we're barely like trying to get up in class and stay awake and like you know Mm -hmm. not procrastinating like all this shit you know it was hard Mm -hmm. i I felt i felt like back and forth about that where it's like it isn't a good time or it is a good time to grow but at the end of the day looking back now like Mm -hmm. not being quarantined anymore uh and hopefully not again yeah. Um, it's I am thankful though at, yeah. at the end of the day because it's like you know what I did there was a lot of growing mm-hmm. and dare I say even get comfortable mm-hmm. I even got comfortable with it because then I was scared to come back yeah like what about Charlie like how was the actual quarantine I mean honestly like like I feel like we all kind of had like the same kind of like like not like struggles kind of but we also like learned a lot too um, it's something we all can have like the same exact story almost like we all grew we all went through something things happen but i think generational like yeah i think uh, like especially teens too we all kind of have to say like oh mine i connected with a lot of people i'm like me fucking too i relate all the memes were like relatable i'm like yes yes yes. they were hitting the spot (laughs) bro from world war three yes i don't know what that was about yeah (laughs) i think one thing to the (laughs) pro vax and the fucking BLM movement, like a yeah, bunch so of so fucking much stuff happened. Social movements and shit, mm-hmm. and everyone was like on board. Y'all were like the blackout. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember and then that. ended up backfiring. Yeah, <laughs> and then people were just having a whole lot of conversations about it. Or at least it seemed like. But then again, you know, I feel like that's a whole other conversation of like really getting into that. Yeah, because yeah. that was that was a lot, mm-hmm. a, a lot, and at least for me, um, it felt really shitty i'm not gonna lie like and especially i think as plc's like obviously mm-hmm. like we're not black but i mean as plc's there is that sense of like overlapping struggles and mm-hmm. like sense that you can like relate and it made me fucking depressed it really did mm-hmm. seeing those videos seeing things from like ahmad uh Arbery, yes uh, there was one Ron that was Taylor, good um and, elijah uh, mcclain that one really stuck with me. yes that one hit Hard. Yeah, and then obviously, uh, shoot, I was gonna say Freddie Gray. No, who am I talking about? George shoot, Floyd. George Floyd. Oh, yes. I don't forget that, but I don't know. I'm not that one. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it was just, oh, uh, it was fucking like disheartening as hell. Yeah. It was depressing, and it was almost like that point where you think, like, because to relate it back, right, like working on ourselves, but it's yeah. like, how can I uplift my spirits and think I'm gonna make another day and keep going and trying to grow and be like, you know, like life is there's still something life has to offer, but it's mm-hmm. like when you see the shit that happens to POC mm-hmm. and with the narrative and the media and like all that shit, like it just gets so wrong that you're just kinda like you feel paralyzed almost. Yeah. And this is gonna throw on someone who's not black. So I like I can only imagine, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. It was it was a crazy time seeing all those movements, but seeing the people who supported it and stuff, and the people who put it in a positive light, like that stuff, yeah. really like uplifted us. You know, it was it was hard. You know, like obviously we're all in quarantine, going through stuff, and then seeing all the deaths and all that. Like that's just that was just crazy, honestly. And then the movements and all that 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 had an impact on a lot of people. Um, one thing that also like people went through a lot was like financial struggles. I know, yes. I know, oh, I did. Yeah. You know, lost my job due to COVID, obviously, and it was in the house. And literally, I was thinking I was not gonna work all the way until um, you know COVID was over, which obviously is not. But I was like, you know, I won't be working for a few months. Like I'm good. I don't need a job right now. I got money. My parents would give me a little something here and there. But you know, after a few months, my parents were like, okay, like you know, like you gotta start working again. Like we got bills to pay. Like they were working from home, but yeah. I needed to go out there and get my own you know yeah. and it just felt i felt so lazy from like going Me to school too. working oh every God. single day you <laughs> know having a routine training, yeah 
And then just literally being on the couch in my bed all day, like, I was like, I feel too lazy right. for this. I know we all gained a couple pounds. Yeah, literally. Yeah, <laughs> like, stomach was bloating out and all. Bro, I call it <laughs> hashtag quarantine plump, bro. Like, <laughs> that's some real shit. We all gained weight. Oh, mm-hmm. boy. Yeah. But yeah, that was just crazy, though, how, like, financial struggles really impacted a lot. I know it impacted my family and impacted me, too. Did it impact your guys' families? Like, what was the story with that? Yeah, because of you and yeah, you and I both mm-hmm. worked at Sky Zone at the time, and mm-hmm. then you you know this. Um, mm-hmm. Like, it was so weird to like hear about it and still go to, to go to work. I mean, mm-hmm. so it was like like we were starting to hear about it. We were asking our bosses, remember, like mm-hmm. like what's gonna happen? They're like, well, we don't know yet. We'll see. Like, what what the what was it? The the mayor the. Uh, the governor yes. of Washington State, mm-hmm. you know, what he would say and stuff before, like, they moved to the further steps. But, like, mm-hmm. when I was, when we were told that, like, we weren't going to come back, that we were furloughed and stuff, it was, like, surreal. Like, mm-hmm. we were like, holy shit, like, this is really going down. People are getting sick. People are dying. Mm-hmm. It felt almost like a, like a shock where you sit there. You're like, oh, my God, I have no, like, source of income right now. Mm-hmm. Places are being closed. Like, literally not a damn thing in sight was open. Mm-hmm. Like, the streets for the first time ever the fast like, food places stayed open no. <laughs> <laughs> they sure did you couldn't make Donald's which came with a safe way like, right. like what well the grocery stores are open but I get your yeah. point yeah. I yeah. get your point but like it was crazy like I did not know like you said like what I was gonna do for a while like I was staying at home at first it was like like okay like I get to sleep in yes. like I get to spend time with my family mm-hmm. this and that like my mom was still working all through COVID because she worked in she works in a factory, um, a printing press. So she's uh, okay. she was still working, but her hours her hours were being cut and stuff. But I was like I was I had no job at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like I couldn't help with the bills. I was like, oh my god, I took out a loan from school because I was worried that because I wasn't able to work, like what like income can I provide? Mm-hmm. So I took out a loan just in case anything happened. Like my mom lost her job totally too. Like we would have like money to spare in case anything mm-hmm. happened but like it was crazy like we like went through a hard fucking time like mm-hmm. aside from the good which like you know the self-reflecting part and the growth part yes. like financially it was hard like mm-hmm. my like my dad wasn't getting any jobs you know he works in the construction business like he was getting nothing my brother too like we had no food at one point mm-hmm. like it was sad you, did you check up the food pantry yeah yeah we did down here okay. but like you know, before, like, I, I didn't even know we had that until, um, like, COVID really got bad. And, like, you know, the school started promoting the, the food pantry. But it was scary. Like, it was dark, mm-hmm. you know. Before, and, like, it was going, dark before it, was, before it got good. Yeah. And going to the store, like, with, like, the limited amount of money. Like, having a set budget and seeing stuff that you can't even buy. Like, it was, like, toilet paper was gone. Like, when we were my yeah, ass The like, water was gone. Like, are you yes, kidding me? Yes, the like, water, yeah. Baby Bro, food was, was gone. gone. Everybody, like, stopped. Like, like, yes. And it's funny because, like, I don't like with Costco, too. Like, they were out. And Costco was known mm-hmm. for buying shit in bundles, bro. Yes. And that was, like, out. Like, they were yeah. out of supplies. I was mm-hmm. like. My brother's a bunch of babies without baby formula. Like, yeah. my, at my the son, time, my niece babies, was a baby. Yo. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I find, like, those people were doing too much at the time. Like, really? Like, you gotta, like. We're all going through this together. I mean, you imagine like, like those quarantine babies. They like, were born in quarantine. Yeah. I remember people were <laughs> jokes about like, ah, your brother's in quarantine. Like you ain't mm-hmm. got no friends, and then having <laughs> everybody. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for me, it, yeah, it was tough. You know what I'm saying? And it's like my my dad lost his job, mm-hmm. and my mom, she was like cleans houses, and I don't know if she was a caregiver at this point. I think she was, but obviously that all took a pause. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And uh, it was it was also weird because like backstory like when all this shit was like unraveling, like mind you like my family we're pretty fucking tight. It's a typical Mexican family where it's like we're tight as fucking with the extended family like they're basically immediate family. But and so point is is that like my mom was like you know there was influences in our family where people were like this is bullshit it's a hoax like that like anti vax shit was like you know and my mom was definitely scared. Mm-hmm. But, like, me and my sister were like, what do you mean? You know, but, you know, I'm trying to, like, you know, think about how can I humble myself? How can I actually reach my mom? Because my mom's just concerned. Like, it, it comes from a good place. You know what I'm saying? And it was just really hard to, like, you know, do all that mm-hmm. while being around each other and being hurt by knowing that we believe in certain things that mm-hmm. obviously are conflicting. Yeah. And yeah, it's that's like, frustrating. That's a frustrating part. During COVID? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know... Like I said, uh, my my dad lost his job. Uh, he does heating and cooling, but he worked with some company at one point for like hella years. But like he got laid off, mm-hmm. 
and uh, you know, but plus I ironically like that winter time before, so like winter 2020, 2021, um, my dad got his green card finally. Ooh, good for him. him. Yeah, which is like fucking awesome. A change, huh? You know, yeah. it was like big hopes. And we're thinking, my pa's like, you know what? Like, my been up, but it's like, guess what? Like, we can get benefits each week, like the unemployment. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah. And I, I, I helped them because, like, he's trying to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. And then my dad, in general, uh, what a character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's an interesting person, but that's for another episode. <laughs> another one. It's too soon, too soon. But yeah. point is, though, just for knowing how my dad is, I just knew, like, I'm going to have to help this fool out. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I did it. But the problem is, is that they were, like, you know, they obviously look back through all your taxes and, like, all this shit. But then they're, like, why uh, why do you not have taxes before this year? Or, mm -hmm. like, why do you have a different social security than this year? Mm -hmm. And I, I might be getting this a little bit. Like, I might be mixing up things. Some of y'all can correct us, you know? But point is, though, like, things got sus. And then to me, I'm, and then, of course, my dad gets scared again. But I'm like, dude, you got to agree on what they're going to do. Take it away from you. Like, right. Like, you're, you're in this other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just be honest. Like, you know, like, just explain the situation, you know. And because uh, of that, though, like, we never got anything. And we'd have to, like, then go into, like, another system to right. follow, like, this explains why we didn't have this or that. Still like, we're still entitled. And then we get males being like, you know what? You are entitled to all of this. So go to another system. And they'll just mm -hmm. kept going from, like, one government system to another, to another, to another. And I get it because at the end of the day, it's like, they don't want to pay you jack shit. Mm -hmm. It feels like. Like, the government just don't, they don't, they don't want to do anything. So yeah. I'm just like, at least that's how I felt, like, as a POC. And it's just kind of like, how many fucking hurdles do you have to jump through? How many yeah. more things do you have to go through? And that was, like, really, really frustrating because at the end of the day, we never saw a penny of that money, you know. And I also went to the food pantry. It's so funny because honestly, when I started getting that shit, I was like, "Damn!" I'm like, "I'm eating better than before." Right? <laughs> eating good. Eating yeah. better. Than Thank you, sponsors. All the people who supply with the food pantry. <laughs> Thank right. you. The donations appreciated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, my sister lost her job too, but she eventually got it back when Ross back opened up. Yeah. I yeah. took a break from post mating, and then again, same situation where it's like go back to post meeting and yeah. so I did it with the mask and like the spray out and like the whole yeah. thing you know and luckily though like my, my dad found another job towards the very end of quarantine mm -hmm. I think yeah because that's when things are starting to like open up and like really well really, I guess the end of quarantine like around yeah. then I'd say like he no you know what no that's a lie technically in August of 2020 mm -hmm. because technically the type of work that he does was essential workers Oh, okay. Because people were, a lot of companies and stores and shit were replacing the air ducts because of the little fucking, like, the little assholes, like, the little COVID germs. Like, they're fucking, like, you see that? You know the spiky yeah. little shit? Like, they're mm -hmm. apparently tiny as shit. And people were buying this different types of filtration so it wouldn't get into the stores. Yeah. And so in that sense, like, they're considered, like, you know, uh, essential workers, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, yeah. yeah. But, you know, we survived. And I, mm -hmm. I thank God... <laughs> Yeah, you know. it sounds like you, you guys all, like, we all kind of, like, had that struggle with money. We had to figure it out. And as POCs, we always get that shit done at the end of the day, honestly. Done, yes. We get it done. But um, I think it's about that time. We're going to take a quick break, you know? Yes. Um, and then we'll have our little five, ten minute break. And then we'll just get right back into it. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. guys welcome back to the everything show where anything and everything is on the table i'm april i'm eric and i'm ian so ian let's just start us off yeah well you know let's let's pick up the conversation we're talking about right so we talked about like being right in the middle of quarantine what it was really like but let, let's shift gears a little bit let's go a little bit more down the timeline and just tell me a little about your eyes experience or perspectives really of like you know the end of quarantine and now being in post-quarantine, right? Like, tell me the yeah. lessons, the, the growths, the things you're like, oh, whoa. Like, you know, now, you know, looking for the mountaintop. Yeah. Know, the, the, ones the, the, the bird's eye view. The bird's eye view. The bird's eye view. For sure. You know? You want to try yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> it's no. a jokes only. No, but honestly, I think the, like, a lot of my friends, too, told me, like, the growth I've done, like, is immaculate. Like, I was not the same person. Okay. Yeah, she's been great. I was not the same person I was two years ago. Okay. And it's a good thing. 
I believe that people can, I feel like if you change, that's not a good thing. You cannot change. But if you grow, that's a good thing. Ooh. What do you mean by it? Like, yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like if you just <laughs> randomly change, like, I'm just going to do this and change as a person, like, randomly up and just changing, I feel like you're not really, like, changing yourself. You're forcing yourself to, like, be someone you're not versus growing into someone you are. If but that isn't makes that sense. a change in of itself? No. Growing is, like, you're learning and you're healing and you grew from the, like, you're pretty much, like, like you said, unpacking stuff and you're growing from that. You're accepting traumas. You're learning from your mistakes and you're growing as okay. a person. And you're, like, you, you could say changing, but I think the word growing is better because mm-hmm. you're better learning. Better suited. Yeah, yeah, better suited. I can see that. Okay. Yeah, yeah so I've done cool. a lot of growth, not change, I would say. Just me personally, I've done a lot of growth. Over it just sounds time. like changes for is very like superficial, almost like service level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. outwardly shit, mm-hmm. you change your habits, but yeah. as a person has to grow. Yeah. But like it's two different contexts though. Like everyone changes their habits, but as far as like as a person, you will always want to grow. I feel like not change. Right, right. Because people are like, damn, like you changed. Like I feel like that's always oh. took it in a negative way. Versus okay. like you really grew, like you really have grown. And that's yeah. where you go from, like, you grew apart from people. Oh. You guys have grown to two different paths, not changed. Yeah. 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 So it's just about the context you use. I love that. I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't, no, I didn't think that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. feel yeah. like that's that. That's just how I look at it as. And uh, so I have I like grown a lot. Yeah. Like yeah. Especially just with my mentality and my mental, you know. Like, I was not in the best mental state, um, you know, in the beginning of quarantine. Like I said, I, like, shaved my hair off. I was trying to change my wardrobe up just because I wanted something to change so fast. But I didn't realize that I needed to grow. And that's where I realized, like, that mid-quarantine, like, I was, like, I started to, like, I was I gained weight, obviously, in the beginning of quarantine. Like, my face was breaking out. Like, I had all these pimples and bumps. And, you know, I had a little weight on me. And I was like, okay, this is, like, not a good look for me. Like, this is just embarrassing. So I was like, I need to find. medical condition, okay? <laughs> I was like, I need something needs to change. So I started, like, working out. Like, we had this treadmill. I pulled out our, our garage, brought it in the house, started working out, you know. I started, it sounds bad, yeah. but, like, I didn't really know how to, like, lose weight besides working out. So, like, maybe, maybe the only way for me to do is to eat less. And that wasn't really the best thing for me because I did develop an eating disorder, like, by eating less and, like, starving myself. But, you know, I did grow it and learn that that was not okay, you know. You have to eat, like, three meals a day. You have to make sure the meals are balanced. You got to make sure you're working out and staying fit, you know. You can still lose weight in a lot of other ways, but that just works best for me. Because you can lose weight so fast, but it'll come right back, you know? Yes. That's what I learned from, like, starving yourself, you know? Yes! <laughs> Honestly, you know? That's that's the truth. That is the truth. That is the honest truth. Yeah. So, you know, I went through all of that and stuff. And, you know, I actually went vegetarian for a month because I feel like something needs to that's change. That's why you went vegetarian. Yeah, because I was going through so much. I was like, I need, like, something needs to change. I need to grow. Like, I was just so desperate for something to change. Oh, and I... Goodness. Yeah, I did. My parents were like, we're not cooking anything different. So you got to make <laughs> meals yourself. I was like, ah, okay. That's a struggle, bro. Yes, it is. You know, just meal prepping and all that. It's it's a lot of work. But then, you know, I really sat down. Like, honestly, I would say the one thing that really helped me through this whole COVID mess is music. I was listening to music all day, every day. Like, music was really healing me. And I learned a lot of lessons through music, if that makes sense. And, like, I did a lot of research on, like, like I would say religion a little bit because, like, I was like, like I said, I was desperate. I'm like, like, where's my God at? Where are you at? So I did a lot of research on that type of stuff. So honestly, it was just like learning a lot. I learned a lot and I impacted some traumas and stuff. And I just grew from all of that, you know, literally not without even counseling or anyone to help me. I did that all my, all by myself. And, you know, that's one thing that I will forever brag about. Honestly, I pulled myself out of a dark place. And I'm that. sorry, but I love saying that because that's yeah. a huge accomplishment. Well, to me, it sounds like you may not have had like therapy or counseling. Because to me, it's like, you're getting that external help. Like, mm-hmm. But what it sounds like, you did, you, you, you took up healthy coping skills. You did yeah. self-care, mm-hmm. which is good. You know what I'm saying? That itself is almost like your own version of the therapy. Like for me, journaling, mm-hmm. I realized like it's almost the same thing as my counseling sessions. Yeah. You're just ranting mm-hmm. and just talking as you saw before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> me just going off on mm-hmm. my therapist and they're like, oh, what do you mean by that? Oh, okay. Continue. Uh, right. <laughs> and I've been doing the same shit in my journaling. I'll be like, what shit do we have on my mind today? Mm-hmm. You know. But what, what about you though? Yeah, you tell us what you're. Um, uh, for me, like a little after you know, uh, like quarantine, I think that like like I was saying before, you know, I felt like I was stuck for a really long time because I was in a relationship. I was like almost like dependent on that person, and yeah. then I had a little bit of time right. of uh, before like you know quarantine really. I mean, uh, COVID really started becoming bad in the United States. Mm-hmm. 
and I was like forced to be by myself. Like that time, like I am so grateful for that, and I and I'm I'm very like I guess in a way privileged because I didn't lose here in in Mexico. I lost a lot of family because of COVID, but here mm. in the United States, I didn't lose any family to COVID. It's still, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, at least yeah, for your, your family awesome. in Mexico. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, you know, all my family, I, I don't really have. A, big family here but um mm. all my family was safe and stuff but i i think for me it was like i was forced to like be like with myself mm. alone and i i hate like i don't i think i was very i still am insecure but not as insecure as i was during covid that part mm -hmm. and i think after covid a little after you know uh, quarantine i was starting to like i saw the effects of all the growth that i did during it um, I, I became very self-aware. I, I used to be like, I, I was very unaware of like, you know, the things I said, how I said it, the way, the way I acted towards people. I was very mean, bitter, rude. Um, a lot of people call me a bitch. Um, and it was, it was a learning experience because I became a lot closer with my sister, with my family. Um, I, I healed myself. You know, I went through an eating disorder as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about that before outside of the show. Um, and it was, I, I've been vegetarian for five years. You know, that reminded me of that. And mm -hmm. I think during COVID, it was really, really, still COVID, but during COVID, it was really, really hard. Because, like, a lot of the stuff, like, it was sold out. You yeah. Know? So I was, like, forced to, like, cook for myself and, like, find different ways instead of just salads and, like, mm -hmm. greens and stuff like that. You know, like, I was dipping into grains, trying to learn how to cook. I learned how to cook a lot. I know how to cook, but, like, a lot more, like, deep, like, dishes. Mm -hmm. I, like, worked on my on my on myself. I, like, drank more water. You yes. ate a lot healthier, even though I gained some weight. But, like, I was forced to... To be my, to be with myself. So, it like I there was this one point in during quarantine where I was like craving um, what felt like religion, almost mm -hmm. like yes. Mm -hmm. And that's when I found out like you know found spirituality. Yes. And I think it was like like I don't know the feeling is unexplainable <clears throat> because I felt like like I would go on drives and like I look up at the sky and it was just this craving of like. Like, my, like, I have faith. I have faith in something. Mm -hmm. And I knew it wasn't religion, but it was it was something, you know, a higher being. And I found spirituality, and oh, my God, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. Like, that really helped me, like, love myself and yes. love and, you know, have empathy towards myself. Mm -hmm. Telling myself that it's okay to go through stuff. It's okay to not be okay. How, like, you know, cringy that sounds. It's yeah. okay to not be okay. But it rings fucking true. It's yeah. true, you know, because we beat ourselves up as, like, humans and we forget that we're human you know yeah, we're not perfect yeah. and i was i hated the fact that i slept in so late during uh during the quarantine like i would stay up to like four in the morning wake up at two in the two in the mm -hmm. afternoon that was a bad habit that i had during COVID, um during the quarantine i mean so i think i was able to like work on that like like heading out of the quarantine it was just like literally a roller coaster like i was doing good doing bad doing good doing bad finding myself losing mm -hmm. myself it was just a whole ride of things, but I think at the end of it, and to where I am today, I think I did a lot of growth. I like, I can truly say that I am finding myself, and I'm still working on that. But I, I think I discovered a little more about myself um, because of the quarantine, and I think, um, I think I love what I, what I found, what I discovered, what I healed. Um, I really felt you on the part where you were like. You, you felt like you believed in something, you had faith, but you didn't know what that thing was. Like, you would yeah. look up at the sky. Like, I really felt that because, like like I said, I was looking up religions and stuff. Like, I wanted to believe in something. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. And spirituality also helped me, too. Um, I looked at literally all different types of religion. I'm like, okay, like, what can I do to help myself? Like, all this stuff. And, like, that one really, like, resonated with me. And, you know, that really, like, helped me get through a lot, a lot of my shit, you know? Yeah. And I think, honestly... Like, just getting in tune with yourself while you have the time is one of the most beautiful things ever. And I really think that yeah. people should value their alone time more than they should. Like, people say, I love my alone time, but they just lay in bed all day. Yeah. Or watch no. Netflix all day. Yeah. Like, alone yeah. time is, like, running errands by yourself. Go out to eat by yourself. You know, like, kicking it by yourself. You know, like, just being in your room, cleaning up, you know, vibing to music. Like, just spending that time by yourself and just take having a, a vibe. Go yeah. walk. Yeah. Take a walk out you know anywhere yeah. honestly 
And it's just like this, like building that relationship with yourself, because if you don't know how to love yourself, you will never know how to truly love someone else. And that, I'm a firm believer on that. Yeah. And that's true. You know, my last relationship, I did not love myself. I hated myself so much. Me too. But yeah. And like now I don't want a relationship. <laughs> I don't want a relationship now, but I know that if I did get into one, I would know how to show someone that true love. And I think that's a beautiful thing, honestly. Yeah. 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 I resonate on that too, because mm-hmm. it's like, I think one, one beautiful part is funny. On, on Instagram, actually, they, they're in quarantine. Uh, do you guys know Sister Cody? No. <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's like straight up hippie, dude. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, spiritual as fuck. Like, that type. Like, just too, like, I shout out Sister Cody just because I, I love his content. A lot mm-hmm. of it's about self healing, self love, yeah. growing, being patient with yourself, and, and that type of vibes. You know what I'm saying? And, and that was super helpful too, cause like, like I said, like even though I'm religious, I do personally believe that like if you're religious, you should definitely be spiritual too. Like you should mm-hmm. be working on your spiritual life, cause there's a lot of religious folk that just be saying the name of God, but mm-hmm. like I'm like, yeah. but in your internal life, are you practicing what you're preaching? Yeah. Are you actually working on yourself? Mm-hmm. Are you trying to evolve and admit when you're wrong? Mm-hmm. And knowing that you know what, I'm just as, as much of a sinner as you, or I'm just as human as you, you know? Cause there's always those people who are like high and mighty. And shit, which I really don't like, mm-hmm. but you know, it, and, and at least to me, it's a little different, obviously, because I was into that shit before quarantine. Mm-hmm. But um, and you know, I think that with Sister Cody, what I really liked it was it was learning how to like let go of shit, honestly, with like um things that don't matter, how to make peace with the past, how to make peace with traumas, you know, because I think people forget like with different kinds of traumas, um, it's it's painful mm-hmm. when you're new to it, when you haven't unpacked it, right? But, you know, through counseling, through self-coping, through love and support mm-hmm. and that type of thing, you eventually realize, like, you know you've healed when you look back and it doesn't hurt you no more. Mm-hmm. When you're like, when you can confidently say, and I'm going to say like to everybody, whatever, like, oh, I went through X, Y, and Z. Like, no. <laughs> like, I also believe, like, some shit, if you want to keep it yourself or to whoever you specifically share it to, mm-hmm. Dope. Keep it to yourself. That's only for you. That's between you and your Lord, your Savior, whoever. Else. Like that's between you and whatever. But right? like, I totally respect that. You know what I'm saying? Because we all get demons that we all faced with, time to time. And mm-hmm. to be able to just understanding, like, once those that past like doesn't hurt anymore, that's how I know I've healed. Yeah. But I mean, it's still a work in progress. You yeah. know, because yeah. there's sometimes where it's like you get out of that and you're like, fuck, like. I, I could just be repeating like same old mistakes, like habits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, the perfectionist perfectionist in me would want to be like, beat your ass up and be like, see, I told you you weren't shit. You're mm-hmm. this, you're that. And it refers back to the trauma, and it it almost like re reinvigorates that trauma and be like, you see, you you have healed from that trauma, mm-hmm. but really is it's it's recognizing like you need conversion every day. Like to me, especially with God, right? I think like every day. It's always saying, yes, Lord. Or every day you're saying, I forgive myself. Or I forgive you. And you can have those re- feelings of resentment. But you know, I hate my dad or I hate my mom. But it just means you got to forgive him all over again. And I know a lot of people have the temptation to be like, oh, I never forgave them. Like, no, I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. I think we're just human. You know? And it just means like, you just got to forgive him again. Just do it over and over and over again. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And that, that's just how it is. Yeah. You know, that's how I feel. Yeah. yeah. You, you mentioned something about healing, and then you mentioned relationships, how you hated yourself yes. during your relationship, and <laughs> I resonate with that so much, because... Self-hatred is real! It's real! Like, like, it's crazy, because, like, during the relationship, like, I thought I was, like, it almost felt like I didn't know myself at all, I was mm-hmm. just in this, like, you know, like, vessel of, a, like, of flesh, and I didn't know myself, I didn't... I literally was just floating, walking around, experiencing life. But, like, I was never, like, in my thought, working on myself. So, I think that when I was in that relationship, like, I think... I'm not saying it's all my fault, but I know that because I hated myself so much and I was so insecure and I was so, like, hurt and I was so, like, wounded Mm -hmm. that I ruined that relationship so much. That person was very caring. That person was, like, nurturing, very understanding, very, very patient. And I ruined that because I didn't love, I didn't love myself. I didn't like myself even. So it felt like almost like, like I would get tired of them being with me all the time, but like they simply loved me and I didn't even, I was, it's not that I was scared of love. It's just, I was, 
I didn't like the fact that they loved me because I didn't even love me. Yeah. So I was like, how in the fuck do you, how, like, how do you love me when I don't even like me? It's like you don't believe them. Like, they're saying, I love you so much. I love this side about you. And it's like, no, you don't. Like, right. I don't even love that. Like, why would you love it? Right. Like, they can literally be begging you and telling you, like, you're the most beautiful person they've ever met. You're different and you're this and you're all that. And mm -hmm. you still won't believe it because you don't even like yourself. Mm -hmm. and, it's and that's just, the sad yeah. part, right? Where it's like, because I think that's like perfect self-sabotage. And mm -hmm. like... Sure, you can look at your relationship like ending as like, oh fuck, like it failed. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like you did right by you. And I think I think it's very inspiring, April, on some mm -hmm. relationship boards that you're able to recognize like, oh shit, like on my end of this relationship, like there is some things that wasn't good, and mm -hmm. I recognize that. You know, and I think that's really dope. That shows growth. That really yeah, does. I'm inspired. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think during it, I I knew that. This, this person was, like, very, um, he was, like, I think, obviously we had different upbringings, so his mentality was different than mine, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying he had to deal with a person who was, like, always on, I guess, in a way, survival mode, mm -hmm. because no one has to deal with anything, right. but I, he was very, like, he had a very, like, chill, like, mindset, in a way, like, he just went with the flow, mm -hmm. and in a way it bothered me because like you know you like you're just going with the flow like you're not even thinking about like the future you're not even planning planning or whatever and i think that's the fact that's the part that like bothered me a little bit but i think we were on different like you know levels of our life of self-awareness and self-love different yeah different yeah. places yes that's what i was looking for <laughs> different wavelengths different yeah. wavelengths different like in places in our life where i was not able to give him what he deserved mm -hmm. you know oh. i couldn't love oh. him the way he loved me and i ruined that and i hurt them and my intention was never to hurt them because they were yeah. so sweet caring mm -hmm. patient and i ruined that and i think um that's why i loved being by myself so much because i knew i couldn't hurt anybody yeah and i knew mm -hmm. that like i was by myself and i was protecting others from me and it was, it was uh, so as long as you have Jomo, you know, like joy of missing out almost. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what that means. I know. I was like, Jomo? I was like, Jomo? <laughs> like, I've heard you know, of like, Jomo. Yeah, fear of missing out, but it's the opposite where like you're glad you're not partaking in certain mm -hmm. things because yeah. you know how much peace you are like doing with you, whatever you do. Yeah. You know? That's really good points, both of you. Honestly, I'm so inspired by hearing you guys' stories, different struggles. Like, it's just so crazy. Um, let's shift gears just a little bit. How are you guys doing now? Like, post-quarantine, you know, vaccines, all this. Like, you know, like You guys now, are vaccinated, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be here if we're not, you know, masks yeah. off and everything. <laughs> but, no, how are you guys doing now? Like, what do you guys have going forward? Like, what are you guys' plans and how have you grown from then to now? Like, tell me about it. It's hard, I know. It is hard, but mm -hmm. I'll start off for a little bit, so you can. I'll start off with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you looked confused, so I didn't know. No, I was. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, like, where do I even start? <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, but yeah, like for me, uh, like I said before, you know, I didn't like myself in the past, and I think that I now am very like, I'm like I'm very empathetic towards myself. Like mm -hmm. I good. know I am stressed. I know that I could do better. I know, very self-aware too. Mm -hmm. I know that I have very bad habits that I have to break and I know what I have to work on. So I think that I've grown so much on that part, like on myself of being self-aware and like just knowing what I have to work on, like I said again. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just unexplainable because you, you, you see your future self and you know you could do so great like, you can be such a great, like, version of yourself. And I think it's just, like, it starts with little, like, steps. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm slowly getting there with the help of the quarantine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Besides all the negative, you know, yeah. stuff that came along with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm in a great place right now. Like, I have a lot going on. I I wanted to get involved with school a lot this, you know, this semester. And, and that was that's one of what, our goals, I that, remember. Yeah, that was one of our goals. Well, like you we talked about the BPU, yo. But like you was wrecked yeah. that with the help of Mandeep, obviously. Yeah, yes. but that's what we're doing right Shout now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Mandeep, yes. I love ya. Um, you know, he's the president. Co-president. Don't give me all the credit. <laughs> co the co-president of BPU. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, 
I'm an officer and social media manager of BPU. You know, we work for SELA, the Diversity Center. Yes. And now we're hopefully starting this podcast to share with you guys. Yes. Um, Coogs Radio. Coogs Radio. Oh, the Everything Show, of course. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I, it's I did what I wanted to do. And I, that's like a big, like the biggest accomplishment for this year. And, you know, we're almost done with the semester, but like it feels so freaking good mm-hmm. to... <laughs> It feels so good to to get involved mm-hmm. and accomplish my goals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it was, it was a roller coaster still because I feel like I'm still working on it. I, like I'm not longer in counseling, but because it's kind of like okay, I, I developed a lot of self awareness. Mm-hmm. I, I realized where I was toxic. I realized, uh, and I made peace with like certain things in my past. And something just like. You know, I still have to forgive myself time to time. Sometimes I'm like, oh, like, you know what? It was not my fault. And then sometimes I'm like, it wasn't my fault. You know? mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it, it's a progress. And I think that's A-OK. Because yeah. I think my thing is that I'm still a perfectionist. I still have very unrealistic goals in the sense of, like, going to the semester. You know, like I told you, like, I was a shitty student, but I was on top of my shit. Mm-hmm. But, you know, around, like, the eighth, nine weeks, like, midterms, like, it kind of crashed down. Because then I got physically sick. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't continue working out. And then once I went back to the gym, um, I hurt my muscle. And then that got me really, I felt really fucking defeated. Even though I just put my muscle. Because some people are like, just rest, like, it's okay, it's not a big deal. But, you know, I realized like, I got back into that, like, unconscious, like, feeling of, of, of still wanting to, I don't know, meet people's expectations or still caring too much about what other people think. Because yes. I'm not going to lie, I, I realized that with the compliments, she's like, oh, good for you, I've seen the amount of growth and shit like that, like, working out, like, I think I got to a little too cocky about it. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm feeling Me myself. Me too, yeah. And shit like that. But then it's like, on your internal life, like, what are you really doing? Yeah. You know? And I realized, like, oh, no, there's still some unhealthy habits I have that have crept back. And I still yeah. need to work on it. And we talked about it. that. We talked and we about talked about it before, you know? And it, it, it's okay. I think, and that's what I'm talking about. With Sister Cody, what he would say is, like, you got to find the beauty in the chaos. The beauty, like, acknowledge that you're not okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, finding that peace in that chaos and then learning to let it go and being just in the present moment. Oh my gosh, mindfulness and going for hours. But like, <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, um, that's just how it feels, you know. Yeah. I bet that feels that feels really good. I relate to you too, guys. Um, like with like honestly, just the growth and learning and just like um, especially like as of right now, you know, I have a lot going on. You know, Cooks Radio, hopefully BPU, working for Sila and on top of that school. And then, you know, your home life, your own personal stuff you got to go through. It's just honestly a lot. And I think that one thing that, like you said, like finding the peace with all the chaos and all that going on. And I think one thing that I have learned is to realize that when I'm not okay, I know what I need to do to get back on being on track. You know, yeah. before I would just like force myself, like I'm not okay, but I'm like, I have to be okay. Like I have to be okay. Yeah. But now it's like, I'm not okay. And that's okay. Like, what can I do to get better? If that's, you know, skipping class, you know, going out to eat, you know, <laughs> with your little, friends. <laughs> yeah, you know, talk it up and chat it up and stuff. Right. You know, sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes you need to just like close the laptop, like fuck this homework. Let me just talk to you for a minute and just distress. You know, honestly, sometimes it's what you need. It sounds so bad and you may get a little behind, but that's what you need sometimes, honestly. Like, I feel like you can get so much insight and so much help from people. But a lot of that, like, help you get is from yourself. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's what, it's what the homie Quang said. I don't know if you guys remember, but he said a long time. It's like, college is, is great. We're in the sense of, like, now's the time to fail. Mm-hmm. Not in the sense of, like, we're young, but, like, yeah. college, like, you could fail a class, but I'm like, so what? Take the next semester. And like, of course, like, money situations, financial, that's a little different. But the point being is that, like, you're not, it's not the end of the world. Out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> if you get under, you go on academic probation, write up a little thing, you know, like, sorry, take me back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But my point being is that, like, you're you're still alive. Yeah. You're okay. You made it. You made it. You mm-hmm. recognize that like you fucked up and you you failed, but like that's not the end of the world. You're not defined by those mm-hmm. things, yeah. you know. And it's I'm telling you, it's like, uh, like now I realize why people say you gotta appreciate every step of the journey. Yeah. Because yes. sometimes a lot of people just go on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next. Just they want this like one destiny that they have. And once they get it, they're like. It's not as satisfactory. Like, it doesn't, yeah. like, that's it? Like, what's mm-hmm. next? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, it's because you never appreciated all the struggles. And I, mm-hmm. I love to get in a place in my life where it's like, I love the game. 
Yeah. Where I love the struggle. Where I'm like, you know what? I'm going through some shit, but I'm excited. I'm mm-hmm. excited for future me because I know right. I'll do it. You know that yeah, motivational yes. type shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, that gets me so excited because we talked about like how um, how like we were doing so great with uh, you know with our habits and like you know making them good habits and then. Now it feels like they're slowly creeping up and becoming bad habits again, mm-hmm. and I'm falling into That's that. That's the fear. Or the fear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it sucks because the fear. you know the fear. Yeah, yeah. Yes. but you know, I know I have to change them, and yeah. I, I know what I can do is just slowly getting out of that again. You know, it's just realizing that recovery from burnt out, yeah. or from mm-hmm. being burnt out, is possible yes. and doable. Because mm-hmm. to me, it was always black and white. It's like I either give my all, I say fuck it, or if I get to a place where I realize I fucked up. I'd rather just like give up. I'm like, oh, poor me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then I'm like, dude, now you're drawing in it. You're being a little, like, you're yeah. being a victim in time. Like, you're being a little bitch. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're being a little bitch. So it's kind of like, you know, recognizing, like, how do I have that balance of recognizing my faults, but also knowing that, like, you don't want to become, like, too scrupulous. You know, so that's yeah. a big word, but it just means, like, when you're too focused on the details, that you're missing the overarching point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The overall goal. Because you're getting way too much in details, like, bro, that's not the point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, get yourself out of there. You're torturing yourself. Why? Right. If you know what you do fucked up on, just accept it, let it go, mm-hmm. and keep moving. You know? Yeah. Take the L and go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Think. Yeah, take the L and go. I think I know we're reaching the end of our hour. We still got a little bit of time. Uh, I just want to ask one more question. Did you guys have that song like during quarantine um, or after quarantine that really like, you know, stuck with you guys to help you guys get through some shit? Because I know I had a couple songs. Did you guys have any or like an artist that really helped you get through it? Mm, Kendrick. I listened to so much fucking Kendrick, Mm -hmm. specifically his damn album. Yes. And to Pimper Butterfly. Even though Pimper Butterfly is more like political if you will mm-hmm. and it's more like you know straight up like black lives matter type shit and yeah, you know, it is. like just describing like the systematic things that play the factors personal failures of people mm-hmm. on an individual basis and on a societal basis like i loved it mm-hmm. but damn i i loved it because it was abstract it was kendrick arguing his most vulnerable moments and realizing like yeah like i am not okay yeah and i Related to that so much. Mm-hmm. I listen to a lot of Kendrick and uh, oh, and a lot of Kanye. Yes. Even if his newer shit with like when he's like by what was it called? Yay. You know, he's talking about his bipolar disorders and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna lie, you have no many times how much I've listened and still listen to uh, I Thought About Killing You. Mm-hmm. Where a lot of people thought he's talking about suicide, but like in the lyrics, it's, it's really confusing. But it's because he keeps going from the first and third person. I only realized this recently that he's talking about wanting to kill his ego. And I was like, yo, that's amazing. I love it. I'm like, I'm eating it. I'm like, ooh, philosophical shit. Let me eat this shit up. And I loved it. Because I also think to myself, like, yeah, I love to have an ego death. Like, I'd love to just, like, you know, shut my ass up, humble myself up, take it out, and just keep moving forward, you know? And realizing that, at the end of the day, it's not about me. You know what I'm saying? There's so many other things, or so many other, like, worries in the world. But it's like, again, can't do that until you first go to you mm-hmm. right and to me it's like i i have to do what like god's will mm-hmm. and I, it's like an oxymoron almost yeah. where it's like i have to love me but i do it by loving god because mm-hmm. i care more about what god wants for me than what i want for me but in return that's going to benefit me uh, that goes back and forth yeah. but you get my point you get my point yes a4 did you have one uh, I think I had a couple songs. It was just really a main, mainly an artist, um, Albert King, and I. He always gets me out of like dark places. I love him. It's just you know the the instrumental bit, the the guitar and his voice. Just it, I don't know. I feel like it feeds my soul a lot, yeah. and I've said that over and over again. But mm-hmm. I I love him. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I did have like a few artists um that really helped me get through a lot. Um, I think for me, the one artist, uh, her name is Solange. She has some really good Ooh, yeah. songs. Um, she's more of like a um, like a neo soul artist, so her songs are a little more like more like low key. Um, there's this one song. It's called "Down with the Click." I love that song. It's my favorite song ever. It's just so chill. It's more of like a jazz type of song. The beats and just everything is just such a vibe, honestly. And that was like my go to song because like like especially for some reason when I go to sleep, I had to put that song on repeat. It was like it would put you in this trance and like it was just like <laughs> it would take you to this whole like outer space like world. I don't know, it was just crazy. Out of that, yeah, honestly, that song just really helped me get through a lot, you know. And that would definitely be my song that helped me get through some shit. Was that yeah. the seat at the table? Or no, it's from her newer album. Yeah, album. when I get home. I see the table is a great album, but it's from the album when I get home. Okay. Yeah. 
I got a little mixed up. Ugh, yeah. When you described that, I felt it. I felt mm-hmm. it. It's like I, yours is jazz, my yeah. musicians blues. Mm-hmm. So I guess they, you know, they're kind together. of cousins mm-hmm. or cousins. Um, yeah, bro. Like when you listen to music, that just ugh, it, it just, just resonates with your soul. Yeah, it takes you yeah. a different place, and it's almost like such a huge coping skill. I don't know about you guys. Yes, it is. Huge coping skill. It's just, it's like someone, it's almost like a ticket where like, for me, it works like it, it validates what I'm feeling and mm-hmm. allows me to feel what I feel. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because it shouldn't be that way. I should be able to validate my feelings, but yeah. it helps. Yeah. You know. Music can really save the soul. Honestly, it does. It does. All right, well, thank you guys. Uh, I think we wrapped up the first episode. I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for thank Julie. You so thank you for the Sea Love, which is letting us use this space. Mm-hmm. For our viewers, whoever that is, you're very much appreciated. Yes. And we're very excited to see what the future holds for us. And I mm-hmm. hope that you enjoy this little demo version. Yes. And yeah, I guess this is a wrap. Yes, yes that was the Everything <laughs> Show. Yeah. Again, I'm April. I'm Eric. I'm Ian. Thank you for joining. You guys have a wonderful night. Whoever's listening to this, Charlie, shout out to you. What if the management just came in here halfway through the I'm like, sir, I know you see us. I'm like, are you serious right now? As you can no, tell, this is a fucking demo. <laughs> Why would you do that? I know. If you know how I feel, why would you say that? Okay. Oh, it's just totally on. It'll keep going. Dude. No, I'm sorry. I just keep smacking it. It's my nail. Hold on. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> why would you do that? Okay. Hold me different water. <clears throat> ready? Hey everyone! <laughs> Fuck I'm you, sorry. bro! I'm sorry, okay. You keep fucking me up! Okay, I- I'm ready, I'm ready. Seriously, though. April, oh. I'm trying to take three mindful breaths! It will take them, sits faster, come ready. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> <laughs>